I call on Government Order of the Day number one. Electoral Amendment Bill interrupted debate on third reading. Order. The Honourable Marion Street has three minutes, 30 seconds remaining to speak, if she wishes to take a call. Mr. The Honourable Speaker. Mary Ann Street. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. In the prayer that starts every uh, sitting day, the words are putting aside all private and personal interest. Putting aside all private and personal interest. The minister in charge of this bill is Judith Collins. Judith Collins has been proven already not to understand the meaning of the words putting aside all private and personal interest. Mr Speaker, the issue with this bill to which Labour takes such exception is the behaviour in the bill now that is required in order for people to uh, turn up to a polling booth and vote. Order, question... order, order. Well, members leaving the chamber should show some respect That's to right. the member yep. addressing the House right. and all contributions will be made uh, with respect to the traditions of the House as enshrined in the standing orders. And that's why I'm standing, oh, because I represent those standing orders and I crave your respect for them and your understanding when a member is trying to address the House. I call the Honourable Mary Ann Street. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr Speaker. I was talking about putting aside all private and personal interests. The minister in charge of this bill, which has come back to the House with provisions deleted, which would have cemented in place the easy vote card practice, is the one who also does not seem to understand the significance of the words putting aside all private and personal interest. Mr Speaker, Judith Collins had the opportunity to reinstate those words by agreeing to, first, an amendment put up by Holly Walker of the Green Party, secondly, an amendment put up by Andrew Little of the Labour Party, thirdly, an amendment put up by me, and she turned down the opportunity each time to make it easy for people to vote. Then why is that? And all I can say about that, Mr Speaker, all I can say about that is that it must have occurred to the National Party that it is in their private and personal interests to make sure that this piece of legislation doesn't make it easier for people to vote. In fact, it puts obstacles in the way. Mr Speaker, this should have been a piece of legislation that was agreed on by the whole House. It could have been that. But now we see with the way it has transpired now, with the Minister's unwillingness to reinstate clauses that were deleted simply by agreeing to amendments by other parties, we see a bill now on uh, electoral procedure that will only advance the, uh, the interests of those for whom it is already easy to cast a vote. For those whom it is not, for those of different ethnicities, for those who are disabled, who are unable to speak, for example, like the man I referred to last day when I was speaking on this issue, that now they have to say their name and provide additional information to show that they're on the roll. It says that they must do both of those things. If they have a disability, then that prevents them from doing that, then they must rely on another person. People want to get up and make their own votes. It's incumbent on this House to make it uh, possible for them to do that and to make it as easy as possible. This bill does not do that. Mr Speaker, I would say that in other countries, both the behaviour of the Minister in her other portfolios and in charge of this bill in particular in another country might be called corruption. And that is not too far from the truth. So oh, no. this, needs to be, this needs to be addressed, should have been addressed by the Minister in charge of the bill, and it is a shame that it has not been. I call the Honourable Member Scott Simpson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It's a great pleasure to stand in the third reading debate of this electoral amendment.